Yeah. Hi, good morning. Good day and greetings from Masa Avenue International College. Today we meet again for Masa Avenue International College Open Day and I'm Parin Jaram, the Head of School for Business and Accountancy. And we bring to you another interesting webinar session. And today our special guest is Ms. Parisha Shukur from Job Settle, Mazer Fintech, and Jamberhat. The topic that we'll be talking about today is step outside your comfort zone and reach your fullest potential in fintech. Fintech is an in topic now. It is what we are generally hearing on news, on our social medias and whatnot. And Ms. Parisha will be shedding some light regarding this topic. And before we start on with our topic today, however, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Ms. Parisha, who is the Chief of Marketing and Communications in Job Settle. Hello, Ms. Parisha. How are you doing today? Hi, good morning, Parvin. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm fine too, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Parisha, before we proceed, I just would like to give our audiences today a little bit background about yourself, and then I'll pass the mic on to you, yeah? And so basically, Ms. Farisha loves developing people to their fullest potential, and that is one of her mission and vision in life. She aims to do that well, and also she has 11 years of professional working experience in corporate form, PR, marketing, and business development. As for her education background, she's got a diploma in communications and media studies from UITM and bachelor degrees in PR from Deakin University in Australia. So, without further ado, Ms. Parisha, let's, yeah, in, let's start on with you and your sharing session for today. Thank you very much, Parvin. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Thank you, Parvin. Woohoo! Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Woohoo! Okay, so we're going to start the morning, the day. Today is Sunday. We have to start the day with energy and full positivity. Yeah? And I'm so happy today to be here and to be invited by Masa College. And thank you, Parvin and team. <laughs> Okay, so without further ado, let's share the slide. Good morning. Assalamualaikum. Hi, good morning, Noriza. Selamat pagi. Okay, so we're going to open our slide, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so good morning everyone. So today's topic is step outside of our comfort zone and reach your fullest potential in fintech. Yeah? Okay. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Safarisha Nor Farisha Abdushukur, and I am the Chief of Marketing and Communication with Mesa Fintechs in Rumberhat, Jung Settle. And I'm also a freelance professional MC, voiceover talent, professional speaker, motivator, youth mentor, and also LinkedIn influencer in Malaysia. So my education background is I have a diploma in mass communication from UITM in Sha'alam and I also have a bachelor's degree BA in public relations from Deakin University in Australia. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, Kak Farisha, what motivates you? What inspires you? So I'm going to share a bit on uh, a bit of uh, my personal experience here with everybody. And I'm sure that everyone can relate to my experience. For me, my biggest source of motivation is my late father. He passed away. In 2016, yeah, he passed away from heart attack, sudden heart attack. So for me, I think that was the lowest point in my life where I lost him. I lost my dad. And to me, I think he is the biggest source of inspiration because without him, yeah, without my father's support, without his motivation, without his love, without his care, I don't think that I am the woman that I am today. So I think all of us, yeah, all of us have gone through challenges in life because we are human. And when we are human, we're not perfect. 
when we're not perfect, we'll make mistakes. We'll go, we will go through disappointment. We will cry. We will go through loss, loss of family members, loss of loved one. And it's okay. It's okay to cry and it's okay to be not okay because we are human. Yeah, we're not robot. So the message that I'm trying to share with all of you here today is, especially to the students, yeah, in life, you will go through so many challenges, unexpected challenges in life. But what you have to do is you have to get back up. You have to bunk it. You can bunk it. You, you have to get back up. So that's exactly what I did. 2016 and 2017 was the very difficult year for me. Very, very difficult year. I was in a depre depression, yeah, depression stage. And then I think to myself where, hey, if I cry every day, you know, this is not going to make my dad happy because I know he's watching me. I know he's watching me from heaven. So I bunk it and I get back up. It's not an easy process. Eh? It's not one to two days. It doesn't take one to two days to heal. In fact, I'm still in my healing process. But I choose to get back up. I choose to bunk it. And I say to myself, Pa, I will make you so proud of me. And I know it's difficult. I know, I know it's difficult and it's not easy. It's not easy. But then you have to be strong and say whatever circumstances that you face in life, whether it's your career, whether it's your personal life, you have to bounce back. You have to be resilient. You have to be strong. And this is relatable in any aspect of life, your student life, your working life. You have to be resilient. You have to bounce back. Yeah, so you can a brani bangkit. You can a brani bangkit daripada kegagalan. You can a brani bangkit daripada keadaan yang suka. You can a brani bangkit daripada segala challenges, any life challenges that is thrown at you. So you have to bounce back and be resilient. Yeah. Okay. So, so for those of you that is watching this now. I hope that you can recite the Surah Al-Fatiha for my late father. His name is Haji Abdul Shukur bin Muhammad. He was born on the 23rd of June, 1946. And he passed away on the 18th of February, 2016. Al-Fatiha. Farisha, I believe that your father is really proud of where you are now. Looking at a sofa, he definitely is. And we are really sorry for your loss. And thank you. And the message that you're giving out to the students that no matter what happens, we do need to bounce back in life. We cannot just sit and wallow in whatever that we're going through because life goes on. Somehow or other, it does go on. It doesn't just stay stagnant, right? Exactly. And I agree with you, Parvin. And with life, it's uh, we go through pain. And it's okay because pain shapes us. The pain molds us and also the pain the experience from the pain help us to be a better person because we develop empathy. Yeah? Kita ada empathy. Kita ada perasaan compassion. Kita ada perasaan empathy terhadap orang lain. So for example, let's say kalau you jadi CEO satu hari nanti, you're a CEO of a company and you have a staff and your staff say, boss, uh, saya tak boleh datang kerja hari ni. Uh, your staff WhatsApp you and say, my father passed away. So as a compassionate CEO, as a compassionate boss, you will be, yeah? Because you will understand, it will take time for the staff to grieve. Because, you know, the staff just lost their father. And then, you know, there's a mental and emotional state. So as a good employer, the CEO understand and also care, yeah? Care for the staff, for the employee, and also for the family. Yeah. Yes, so, empathy, yeah. so empathy is very important. And then I remember when my father passed away, uh, my general manager at that time in my previous company, she came to my house and visit me. Mm, and she brought me, you know, like boba, flowers, and GM to have a, you know, a boss that cares for you, you know. So I think it's really important. The message here is, you know, to be a leader, yeah. Untuk menjadi seorang pemimpin, harus ada sikap empathy juga kepada orang lain. Bila you ada sikap empathy, 
you ada sikap penyayang and you memahami you memahami apa yang staff-staff you go through what your staff what your employees go through that will make you an amazing leader amazing leader empathy you lead with the heart of course you lead with your brain but you also lead with your heart yeah so that is really important could okay. agree more with that Parisha. that's very oh. important yeah, it's very important. So I give you an example. Eh? If we look at the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. Yeah? Jacinda Ardern is a female Prime Minister of New Zealand. And she lead with empathy. And how she handled the COVID cases in New Zealand and, she, and how she empathised with the uh, mass shooting, remember the shooting that happens at the uh, New Zealand mosque? And she came, she came to the mosque, she went inside the mosque, she, she hugged, she hugged the immediate families, yeah? That happened. Empathy, empathy in leadership is very important, yes? Okay, so let's go to the next slide, yeah? Okay, so my career achievement, I have nearly 12 years of uh, professional experience, like what Parvin said, in corporate communication, uh, branding, marketing, public relations, and also business development and corporate communication. And I'm also a freelance MC. Yeah? So uh, a lot of corporate companies and government uh, call me, invited me to MC their events. So I have MC'd and host for US, yeah? American Independence Day Gala Dinner. I have MC for uh, Selangor Youth uh, Fundraising Gala Dinner. And I've also MC for British Malaysia Chamber of Commerce Digital Innovation Conference back in 2019. Yeah, so I have MC'd a lot of uh, corporate and also government events. And I also MC for royalty, ministers, royalty, VVIP events. And with MC, uh, you have to practice because it's the same thing as public speaking. Yeah, So if you want to be a good public speaker, you can join Toastmaster. Yeah, you can join Toastmaster or you can join a debate club in your university. And I believe that Masa also have a debate club, right? Like you have like an association for students to polish their public speaking skills because this is going to shape you to be the next leader of tomorrow, yeah? Public speaking skill is very important. And it's really important to be good at both languages, English and Bahasa Malaysia. And I think that both languages is equally important. English and Bahasa Malaysia. Bahasa Malaysia is Bahasa Ibunda kita, Bahasa Nombor Satu Malaysia, Bahasa Ibunda, Bahasa Malaysia. And English is the language that connects us with the rest of the world. So we need to be both. We need to be good at both languages and this is very important. So let's go to the next slide. I'm also invited to be the MC for Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia, Debat Rakan Muda, English Debate Competition. So this was back in 2020 and this was online yeah, via Zoom. And uh, Eon Retail Malaysia, I'm also one of their so social media influencer. And also Asia Youth International Model United Nation, AIMUN. Okay, so what is AIMUN? What is Asia Youth International Model United Nation? So this was back in 2019. This was Zaman Sebelum COVID, uh, before okay, mass. So this was before COVID-19. So I was invited to MC the Asia Youth International Model United Nations at... Putrajaya International Convention Center, PICC. Eh? So at that time, we are the Tuan Rumah. We are the host. Malaysia is the host. And inside the hall, dalam day one, Putrajaya Convention Center too, there's about 2,000, yeah? 2,000 youth delegation from all over the world. So you can see there's a uh, youth from Australia, from Germany, from New Zealand, from Kazakhstan, from Pakistan, from Singapore, South Korea, Japan, seluruh dunia under United Nations youth. Yeah? And that was one of the most memorable moments in my life, I have to say, because it's an international event. 
Yeah, even our ministry, uh, our ministers were there as well. There's ministers, there's dignitaries, and there's also duta duta dari uh, negara negara United Nations. There's also ambassadors there as well. So it's a very prestigious event. Yeah, so that is like one of the most memorable e events that I've hosted. Okay. It does sound very impressive, so Farisha. Must have been nerve wracking for you to be speaking at such a big event. It is because there's about two thousand, eh, dua ribu orang, and then I remember I started off with speaking in Bahasa Malaysia. Assalamualaikum, apa khabar semua? Apa khabar? Apa khabar everybody? So, so you teach them about our language. Apa khabar? Terima kasih. Because these are you know people from all over the world, so you teach them our culture, you teach them our language, and of course the kasana in any events mesti ada makan kan ada nasi lemak ada apa ada rojak so i've also took the opportunity uh, when i was emceeing the event mm -hmm. i also took the opportunity to share with them you know our local food what is nasi lemak nasi goreng our kuih curry pot because you know when you have international delegates coming to our country for the first time so of course they not Cuba our Malaysian food, can so kita as the tuan rumah, as the ambassador, you want to share with them. Okay, this is nasi lemak. Okay, this is uh, curry puff. Uh, this is kue kochi. Uh, this is kue sri muka. Uh, so my favorite is onde onde. Okay, siapa yang suka onde onde kat sini? Angkat tangan. That's me. Saya pun suka. My favorite onde onde. <laughs> it's onde onde and curry puff. So the thing is, um, what I love most about international conferences. One of the delegates, yeah, she's from Germany. She came up to me. Masa tu, uh, tengah break. It was during break time. And then she came up to me and she said, I love what you're wearing. I love your baju. I was wearing a baju kebaya. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I told her where to get it. Mana nak beli? And then I told her, you have to go to Jalan Tuanku Abdul Rahman. There's so many baju kurung and kebaya there. And they are so in love with our culture. They're so in love with our baju. Kita punya batik, kita punya songkit. So with Malaysia, you know, we are rich with our culture, tradition and heritage. So it's really nice, you know, to be able to get the opportunity to MC an international event and also sharing about Malaysian culture. Yeah, definitely. International people love our cultures generally. We are such a melting pot, right? Why is there not to love anyways? Yes, and of course, people love our food because we are rich with food 24-7. We have the mama, we have uh, nasi lama, and we have my favorite spot. I suka pergi uh, dekat Kampung Baru. There's a nasi lama spot, nasi lama Kampung Baru. Oh, that's the best. Oh, yeah. I, I have not heard of that place. One day maybe I'll yeah. go. Nasi lama sambal sotong and sambal kerang. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, sounds yum. <laughs> Okay, so I also want to share with you on marketing in Asia, uh, 70 rising personalities on LinkedIn. Uh, so I was awarded uh, from uh, marketing in Asia, uh, marketing in Asia, 70 rising personalities on LinkedIn in Malaysia for 2020. And I have about nearly 50,000 followers on LinkedIn. And I have 90,000 plus followers combined with my Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also TikTok. And apart from that, I'm also a video podcaster. I have a podcast. It's called Woman Empowerment Series. You can catch it on YouTube. You can have a look at my YouTube channel. And I interview inspiring women in Malaysia, uh, inspiring a series. And I also have uh, inspiring series as well, where I interview both men and women. So I have women empowerment series, and I also have inspiring series video podcasts. And I'm also a content creator. I love creating content on education, training, leadership, motivation, and empowerment. Very impressive, Persia. I'll definitely promote your instant, your podcast to my students to actually listen because I love listening to podcasts generally. Yeah, and I'll go and search on, it's on Spotify, right? Yes, I'll share with you the link 
Yeah. It should be yeah so I'll share with you the link with everyone here later. Okay. And I just want to share with you on the Tower of Self Confidence. And this is also a podcast that is available on Apple Store and Spotify. And this is called the Tower of Self Confidence. And this is where I share on how do you unleash how do you want to unleash your confidence yeah because a lot of people you know uh, when it comes to confidence sometimes you know we have days where we don't feel like we want to do anything at all right sometimes we lack in motivation and that includes me myself because i'm human i want to say yes sir. sometimes you, you have days where ah oh, oh i don't want to go to work i feel so unmotivated yeah. Oh, I don't want to go to school. I feel so unmotivated. Oh, I don't want to go to Massa College because I feel so unmotivated. But how do you train your mind? Macam mana kita nak train brain kita daripada unmotivated kepada motivated? Macam mana kita nak shift kita punya mindset daripada kita macam down, kita rasa tak motivated to switch our brain to motivated? Ha, I'm going to share with you. Okay, so I practice growth mindset. What is growth mindset? So growth mindset ni is a practice where if you are faced with a difficult challenge in life, yeah? So for example, you feel, ah, malas lah nak pergi kelas hari ni. Aku tak ada mood lah nak pergi kelas. Hmm, nanti cikgu Pavin mesti marah. Kan cikgu Pavin kan? Uh, so how do you change your brain, how do you change your mind from malas nak pergi kelas to rajin nak pergi kelas? Okay, so I'm going to teach you the scenario here. Try to picture yourself 5-10 years from now. If you don't go to class, what happened to you? If you go to class, what happened to you? If you malas nak belajar, what happens to you? If you rajin nak belajar, what happens to you? So it's all about the route that you take. It's all about the keputusan. The keputusan yang you ambil. So, the decision that you make. So, let's say, uh, I malas nak pergi kelas lah. Mm, okay lah. Uh, I tak nak pergi kelas Cikgu Parvin lah sebab boring. So, I nak duduk dekat rumah. I nak tengok Netflix. And then, tidur. Yeah. So, what do you get? What do you get from there? Nothing, Nothing right. Yeah. But if you attend, if you attend Cikgu Parvin's punya lecture at Masa College, you know it's difficult. You know it's susah. Mula-mula tu memang susah. It is difficult. You don't understand. But then if you take the initiative to learn, you take the initiative to learn and you step outside of your comfort zone. You keluar daripada zone selesa. Zone selesa tu apa? You are so comfortable in your couch, in your katil. Eh? So you have to get out of your comfort zone and learn. Yes, it's difficult. If it's easy, then everybody will do it. If it's easy, then everybody will become an entrepreneur. If it's easy, then everyone will become a leader. It is difficult. But then when you go to the difficulty, when you go through all the difficulty, alamak, soalan ni susah lah, Cikgu Parvin. Boleh bagi soalan senang sikit lah. But you have to go through the hard, the hard route first. You kena lalu, you know, the difficulty first. You have to pass that stage. Once you pass that stage of difficulty, then you will find that, hey, sebenarnya senang je, class Cikgu Parvini is actually not that difficult. It's actually not that difficult if I take the initiative to learn and I take the initiative to ask Cikgu Parvin if I don't know the answer, if I'm not sure of anything. And I also want to share this with all of you here, with all of the students and fresh grad. Buat salah tak apa. It's okay to make mistakes because you learn from your mistakes. But make sure that you don't repeat that mistake again lah. Uh, you learn from that mistakes. So let's say for example, you buat assignment, you buat, uh, you buat assignment, you hantar dekat Cikgu Parvin and then you buat salah because ada typo and then a bit of grammar mistake, grammatical error, typo. It's okay because you notice your mistakes. So what you should do the next round? So the next round, when you submit your second assignment, make sure that you proofread. You check dulu sebelum you email to Cikgu Pahamvin. So it's okay to make mistakes, yeah? So it's fine. If you make mistakes, you learn. 
what's not okay is when you make mistakes and then you repeat it again and again and again. Ah, that is wrong. But if you make mistakes and you improve yourself, that is the way to go and that is how you learn, yeah? Okay, so let's talk about fintech. Okay, Parvin, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you know about fintech? Um, not so much, but I believe that fintech is a child of blockchain and they are all grouped together. Honestly speaking, I am not very familiar with fintech and therefore I'm having you here today to actually share your knowledge with me so that I can learn something about fintech. Okay, so what is fintech? Yeah, fintech is financial technology. It's used to describe new tech that seeks to improve and automate the delivery and use of financial services. So you see, there's so many apps right now, kan? Okay? There's so many apps. Kita ada Shopee, kita ada Grab, kita ada Lazada, kita ada apa? There's so many Grabs available, and that is fintech. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Grab, uh, pagi tadi I order my food through Grab and that is fintech, that is technology because we are using our mobile app to order food. Yeah, yeah, and then we can do our banking transaction online. So everything is all online. Everything is cashless. Yeah, so these days is really easy, it's cashless and this is the future. This is the way moving forward. Yeah, so it's really interesting with financial technology and there's a lot of things that can be learned. And if you are interested uh, to join a fintech startup company, let me know. You can email me and then um, and then we can take it from there because I know there's a lot of young people, yeah, especially the Gen Z, yeah, budak-budak uh, Gen Z, budak-budak uh, Gen Z, the, uh, the millennials, the young people who are interested to join and work in fintech startup company. Okay, so I'm going to share with you a bit on Joom Settle. Okay, Joom Settle, the name of my company is Mesa Fintech and Member Hut, and our brand name is Joom Settle. Okay, so let's watch the video for more info. All right. Okay. Hold on here, let me just share my... Okay, just give me a second. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Um, it's still not the video yet. Okay, can you see there's an introduction to Joom Settle Platform video? Uh, with the link, yeah. Okay, it's loading one moment, yeah? Okay, how about this one? Can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, sekarang boleh nampak eh? Okay, can you see Azaria Tagaya in the uh, in the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so Azaria Tagaya, she's the host of Money Matters. She's the spokesperson for Joom Settle and she's also the TV host in TV3. Okay, so let's have a look at the video. You've been paying all these bills with your credit card. Have you ever thought of paying your supplier, your landlord, or even your staff with it? Visit jomsettle.com. Jom Settle can unlock your credit card's full potential by allowing you to pay for your rent, supplier bills, your staff salary, and more. Step 1. Tell us who you want to pay. Step 2. Attach the supporting documents. Step 3. Insert your credit card detail and pay. It's that simple, and your recipient will receive a bank transfer within three working days. The entire process is secure and complies with international standard PCI DSS. All your personal information is protected by PDPA. Joan Settle supports all Malaysian-issued credit cards. Join me, Azaria Tagaya, and be financially wise with Joan Settle. Now, it's your turn. For more information, visit jonesettle.com. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so that's a bit on Joom Settle. So what do you think about Joom Settle, Pavin? I find it so convenient. 
because I'm all about going cashless and going on e-wallet and Jump Center looks like we could even be getting our salary from a platform that is so much more convenient. Yeah, and it's really interesting because uh, I give you an example. So let's say you want to pay your supplier mm -hmm. and your supplier do not have a credit card terminal, yeah? So, uh, so your supplier is a small business, uh, industry kecil, peniaga kecil. So, uh, dia tak credit card terminal. Jadi, macam mana dia nak buat payment? Uh, they just uh, log on to www.jumsato.com and just register. It takes about 5 to 10 minutes and then they can do the transaction. And within 2 to 3 days, you will receive uh, the payment from your supplier. So it's that simple. Yeah. So and also, uh, it's also good for freelancers. So let's say, for example, uh, Pavin, you hire a freelance graphic designer. Uh, so you hired a freelance graphic designer to do the poster for Masa College and uh, you want to pay uh, the freelance graphic designer using your company card, your company credit card. Yeah? So uh, as a small business, uh, the freelance graphic designer, he doesn't have a credit card terminal, but no problem. They just can log on to www.jumsettle and then they can receive payment uh, from credit card uh, yang you buy there, like you use your company credit card, and within two to three days, the freelance graphic designer will receive his payment, and it's very simple. And right. so basically, let me, let me uh, to ask you a question. Yeah, so this is more on the credit cards only, or does it so work the same way as our um, banking? Yes, yeah, so this one is for credit cards only. So I give you an example. So we have uh, a loyal uh, user, our customer, and he used his credit card to pay his property maintenance fee. Yeah, property maintenance fee belum bulan. So let's say, for example, what is the benefit to him? Okay, so he is an engineer. So the benefit is what whatever cash that you have, uh, you can reserve your cash in hand. So you boleh simpan duit dalam tangan. Uh, so you can reserve your cash in hand and then you can use um, your credit card to pay for your property maintenance fee. Yeah. And a lot of people, they use their credit card to collect points as well. Macam for example, let's say you not collect air point, air miles, can uh, enrich, you not travel. And then let's say if you collect your credit card points, you will you will stand a chance to get, you know, two free tickets, uh, you know, with the credit card and the points, the miles, can. So that's the benefit of it. And I think with credit cards, if you know how to use it, if you know how to manage your financial uh, finances, it shouldn't be a problem. Problem. And you know, it can be, you know, like very, apa orang cakap? Uh, like very, very convenient and very easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. that's how it works. Okay. I'll so I'm going to take a look at this um, dome setter, and I believe that a lot of people will be interested in it as well. So because it's really convenient to do it in just one app, just like what Mark Ella is saying, it's so convenient and she loves cashless. Yes. Okay, so Parvin, I'm going to continue and I'm going to share my slides, yeah? Okay, just give me a second. Okay, I'm going to open my slide. Sure, sure. I'm just curious, yeah, while the slide is opening up. Who actually, uh, who's the starter of this particular job center idea? Is it you or... I mean, yes. Which challenge is this? Okay, so our founder and CEO is Mr. Falco Lee. Okay, he is the founder and CEO of Jump Settle. And you can search his profile on LinkedIn. And he's very active on LinkedIn as well. You can search under Falco Lee. And he is the brainchild behind Jump Settle. So he founded, uh, he's the founder and CEO of Jump Settle. So you can follow him on LinkedIn. Definitely will do that after this. Okay. All right. So can everyone see my slide? Boleh nampak tak? Boleh. Okay. So uh, the next topic that I want to share with everyone is make yourself visible to HR and recruiters. And this is really important for students. Eh? 
uh, Masa College students and also graduates and to any students and graduates in general because you need to make yourself visible out there for HR and recruiters to notice you. Uh, is that correct, Pavin? Especially right now, yeah? Zaman sekarang, you need to make yourself visible for human resource to notice you. Yes, it's not like the olden days where people find us. We have to find them, we have to be visible. Then we are being approached generally. So many social media platforms, therefore I believe more yes, and I agree with you. Yes, and I agree with you, Parvin, because LinkedIn is the best platform because it's a professional platform, and it's not just a platform to find jobs. It's also a good platform to find clients and potential mm -hmm. partners and collaborators. So I would like to take this opportunity to encourage students and also graduate to start getting active on LinkedIn. Open an account; it's free. It's FOC, you can open a, an account with LinkedIn. And if you decide to go with LinkedIn Premium, uh, there's also the uh, the payment option as well, LinkedIn Premium. And you have to get yourself out there and expose yourself on LinkedIn because you don't know who's, who might be watching you, who might be looking at your profile. It might be the head of human resource from a MNC company, it might be the CEO or uh, the owner of the company looking to hire candidates, yeah? Because uh, a lot of uh, HR and recruiters, they're always on a lookout for fresh graduates and students. So this is the good opportunity for you to get yourself out there, you know, to be active on LinkedIn, to be active in writing contents, because you never know who might be interested in your profile and you never know who might be interested to hire you to work for them. Yeah. And you never know who's watching. Let's say the CEO of an MNC company look at your profile and uh, they are looking for management trainee, yeah? executive, young executive to join their company. And your profile, your resume fit the bill. And you get a phone call from their HR because the HR notice you from LinkedIn because you're visible online, yeah. So that's the that's the benefit of it because LinkedIn can help you to get jobs. LinkedIn can also help you to find clients, and LinkedIn is also a good platform to uh, forge relationship, business partnership, business relationship, and also partnership and collaboration. Like for example, like us, like Parvin, you know, we forged the partnership and collaboration and we have this session, this webinar session. And for yes. me, I have a very deep passion in nation building. Yeah, because I believe education. Education is number one. Education is the key. We have to educate ourselves. We have to educate our nation. We have to educate the future leaders of tomorrow. And for me, uh, nation building hold a very special place in my heart. And I believe that it's important for me to pass the baton to the younger generation. It's like the Olympics, yeah? Macam kita, you know, berada di Olympics and di gelanggang. You know, when you're running the sprint, you pass the baton to the next person next to you. Yeah. yeah. So as a senior person, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass my baton to my manager, and then my manager will pass the baton to the exec, and the exec will pass it to the intern. So that is the circle. So that is the circle, yeah. So we have to pass the baton. And for me, I believe nation building, nation building is really important, and which is why I accepted the offer by Masa College with Pravin invited me for this talk and it's really important to educate our youth because our youth is the future leaders of tomorrow and I love sharing and I love sharing with the youth on you know on fintech on uh HR how on you know putting yourself out there on LinkedIn and make yourself visible okay so we're gonna share the next slide there is a question, Parisha, if I may interrupt with you. There's a student a question by our student, Linkert Kalidas. He's asking if you guys do provide internship opportunity for mass comm students. Ah, okay. Hi, Linkert. Okay, that's a good question. So what I'm going to do later uh, is I'm going to share it to my email address and then you can uh, you can email me your CV, your uh, CV and resume, yeah? And also your cover letter. Sure, okay. All right. Thank you for the question. Okay. So we uh, we accept 
you know, students from all disciplines, uh, not just MassCom. We accept uh, students from uh, finance, from IT, uh, legal, so any background. Yeah, mm -hmm. so not just mass communication, you can have a degree in finance, you can have a degree in law, you can have a degree in uh, in in any subject matter, and we're open to, you know, uh, to accepting students for internship and also full-time opportunity. So I'll share with you my email address later, yeah? Okay. Sure, Marisa, thanks a lot. Okay, you're most welcome. Okay, so the next slide I want to share with everyone is uh, this one is very important. Sangat, sangat penting. Your network is your net worth. Okay. Why? Why is this important? Because the people you know defines what you are worth, basically. And that's why LinkedIn is a very important platform because that's where, like you said, we are building our partnership, building our entire network. That is where we are selling ourselves out now these days, advertising ourselves. Basically, that's what I understand from this. Exactly. And I think that this is really, really important because your network is your network. Yeah? Because you have to start building your network since you're in university lagi, you have to start from mm -hmm. early age. So let's say you are 21, 22, and you are a student of Massa College, and it's good for you to start now, yeah, because you're still young, and perjalanan masih panjang, you are still young, you know, you have to start from scratch, and this is the time for you to build, build yourself up, build your career, build your future. Yeah? So you have to start building network. How can you network? Okay, so LinkedIn is a good place to network online. Yeah, so that one is virtually. You do the networking online on LinkedIn, virtual, and also offline. Offline is face-to-face, -face, human interaction. So human interaction is, let's say, you get invited to attend a networking, a business networking event, and your manager asks you to attend the event on behalf of the company, right? So you know that it's really important, yeah? Your role is really important as the marketing executive, for example, for that company, and you know that when you attend the networking event, you have to bring your business card. You can about what your business card, yeah? And then you have to, you know, mingle around with the, the people uh, around you and, and talk about, hi, uh, where are you from? I'm from this company. No, no, no. So that's how you build your network, yeah? And a lot of people, they find that like, oh, I'm scared because I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody from the event. And that is the perfect time for you to make new friends and meet new acquaintances and also forge new business relationship and opportunity. Because you might not know that person that sits next to you at a networking event might be your potential client. And that person who is in uh, that person who invite you to the event might might be your potential partner partnership or event collaborator in the future so it's good for students and uh, fresh graduate to start attending networking event because you build your portfolio you build your credibility and then it also helps you to build your self confidence as well and communication skills because you start mingling with people you start talking and also you develop your interpersonal skills yeah yeah so let's say for example you are an introvert okay you are an introvert and you feel oh i'm shy i'm shy and i'm scared to go to networking event because i'm an introvert it's okay and for me my tip would be um you know you can just go to the networking event have a few drinks, uh, minum, and then makan. And then you can chit-chat with people around you, exchange business cards. And then you might not know from there, you think that, oh, uh, I'm scared lah. But then after you start speaking to the people that is next to you, that is sitting in your table, you find that, hey, actually I have a lot of things in common with people sitting in my table. And you build network, yeah, networking opportunities. And then soon you know it, the person sitting next to you will become your client. That a part customer. So that is how you forge the relationship. So building relationship is really important. And I really galakkan, I encourage students 
and also fresh graduate to go for networking events. So if you see in the newspaper, I did advertise, you know, at the expo convention at KL Convention Center, you will see all the big exhibition, the workshop expo, go network, mingle and meet people. Yeah. And don't be afraid. Yeah. Jangan rasa takut. Don't feel, af- uh, don't be afraid that, oh my God, there's so many people. I'm so scared. But this is the best time for you to step outside of your comfort zone. Go to the exhibition, go to the expo, go to the, uh, for example, let's say there's a digital tech, there's a fintech conference at KL Convention Center. And my company is one of the uh, exhibitors. Yeah? So I have a booth there at the conference. So you can come and say hi to me. Yeah, and meet me in person. And that is how you build the relationship. Yeah, you build the relationship, say, hi, come and visit me at my booth. And then you will see so many other fintech companies also have their booth there, other their apa, exhibitors, all the exhibitors having their booth there. And then you have the opportunity to network with them. And the best part, yeah, for student and fresh graduate, you can also take this opportunity to ask them personally, face-to-face, if they have any vacancy available. Yeah, and then immediately you can send in your resume. So if you don't bring your hard copy, it's okay. You just use your phone and then just immediately get their email address and then email the CV to them. So it's that simple. So that's why I say networking is very important. Very, very important. So if you see any expo, any convention, go network, meet with people, talk to people because you never know, you might get a job from there. Yeah, this is something we are also trying to teach our students now, especially post-COVID. Things have been different for the past few years and we're trying to expose them to as much as possible. Again, I will, of course, talk to you regarding this. I mean, like, in order for us to expose our students, you know, yeah. Okay, so the next slide, okay, I want to teach everyone here is soft skill. This is very important, right, Pavin, for students? Very Okay. Definitely so, important. Yes, because in any occupation, whether you're a doctor, you're an engineer, you're a software developer, you're a mobile app de- developer, you're an entrepreneur, you're a fashion designer, any type of occupation, you're a pilot, you're a stewardess, apa apa pekerjaan sekalipun, you need soft skills. Why? Because soft skill is the one that will shape you, yeah? mold you. You need to have good communication skills. You need to have leadership skills. You need to have responsibility. You need to be able to work with people. Teamwork, yeah? teamwork, very important. You need to have problem solving skills. You need to have the ability to work under pressure and also good time management. Huh? This one is sangat, sangat penting. Very, very important, good time management. You need to have the flexibility what is flexibility agility agile yeah negotiation skills yeah you need to have good negotiation skills so i give you an example so let's say i just graduated from masa college and i just started my job as a junior executive working in a global mnc company and i need to negotiate the costing to my supplier hello Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Lim. Hi. Yes, this is Farisha here from MNC Company. Yes, I just received your quotation and it says here 5,000 ringgit. But I was wondering, uh, since we have been your client for more than 10 years, is it okay if we can, you know, like lower it down a bit because uh, we have been engaging you for 10 years and in all our events, we, we have been using your company. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Lim. Thank you so much. So I'm waiting for the new quotation, yeah? Thank you. Okay, bye. And that's how you negotiate, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So from 5,000 ringgit, I managed to lower down the quotation to four. 4,000 because I built a relationship with Mr. Lim and I've been a loyal customer of Mr. Lim for 10 years. Chonto lah, for example. For example, Chonto. So the company has been, uh, has been uh, engaging Mr. Lim as a contractor, as an event contractor for 10 years. So that is how you negotiate. Yeah, so that is how you negotiate to a supplier. So that's why soft skill is very important. Yeah, Agility is also important. Agility is you need to be agile. 
So you need to be uh, agility and agile in any surrounding. So for example, let's say your manager. Your manager said next week, next Monday, uh, you have to follow uh, your manager and team to Penang because you have to do a presentation to a business group there in Penang. So you have to follow them to Penang lah because it's a business trip. Yeah, so at the same time, you know, you get to, you know, go jalan-jalan, melancung juga. At the same time, go to Penang, you get to see sightseeing and then uh, makan apa tu, cakwe tiaw and also the famous roza, roja and nasi kanda in Penang. But at the same time, you have to deliver the presentation lah to the client. So you get to work and you get to also jalan-jalan at the same time. So, um the thing that I want to share with you here is you need to be agile, flexible. So you need to be flexible. So when your manager say, okay, we're going to go out station next Monday, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to go to Penang because we have a big presentation that we need to deliver to our client. And our client is in Georgetown, Penang. So you have to follow your CEO and also your manager and you see how they present. You see how you see how your CEO and your management team conduct the presentation. And for you as a junior, uh, a junior executive, you just joined the company and it's good for you to learn the ropes, belajar, and also learn and observe and see and see how your manager conduct the presentation. See how your CEO conduct the presentation because that is how you learn. Because you never know in 10 or 20 years from now, or maybe you decided to open up your company because there's also a lot of young people, yeah, like, uh, you know, decided to, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start a, a mobile apps. I want to be an entrepreneur. So this is, this is how I do it. And this is how I start. So this is how you develop your leadership skills, you know, learning the ropes. Yeah. So flexibility and agility is really important. So why are soft skills important? Because most interaction with other people requires some level of soft skills, yeah? So you might be negotiating to win a new contract, to win a new project uh, from a client. And then this is also going to help you with your career progression. So soft skills is very, very important. So boys and girls, if you find that you are lacking in soft skills, if you rasa macam... Mm, Bahasa Inggeris saya tak tak bagus sangatlah kak. Saya sebenarnya takut nak cakap. It's okay. Yeah, don't don't feel ashamed, don't be afraid because you can always start from now. You boleh belajar daripada sekarang. So ada masa lagi. Ah uh, so kalau you ambil inisiatif untuk belajar, okay, and then you tahu okay, usia saya tahun ni saya 21, 22. Saya muda lagi and saya rasa saya nak develop saya punya English skills, yeah, English speaking skills. So saya rasa saya kurang bahagian tu kak, saya rasa saya nak belajar. So macam mana you nak belajar? You step out of your comfort zone. So sesuai dengan topik hari ni eh, today's topic. You kena keluar daripada zone selesa you keluar daripada zone selesa and like okay I need to attend training so you invest in training you hire a trainer ambil trainer hire a professional trainer yang boleh coach you yang boleh yang boleh guide you yang akan coach and train you macam mana nak jadi confident speaker dalam bahasa Inggeris so mula-mula tu you akan rasa takut you feel oh I'm so scared okay it's okay it's okay to make mistakes you salah cakap pun tak apa it's okay uh, broken English pun tak apa. It's okay as long as you learn. Yeah. So as long as you learn, you take the opportunity to learn and always invest in yourself. Yeah. Invest in yourself. So let's say for example, you invest. Okay. You know that you're lacking in English and then you ambil initiative to hire a trainer untuk ajar you. You know that that is your investment for the future because that is masa depan you. That is your future. Uh, so some people, they can invest Oh, I nak beli iPhone. Wow, they can invest in an iPhone. Tapi, if you want to invest in your future, you know, you want to be a good speaker in both English and BM, okay, you nak uh, be a confident speaker and you rasa, oh, this is really, really important and you will invest in it and you will make time for it. And then in the future, for example, lah, contoh in the future, you macam, eh, betul lah apa kakak ni cakap Eh, aku dapat kerja ni pun sebab aku dah attend training. Yeah, because when you attend training, 
you put in the work. Yeah, you put in the work, you invest your time, you invest in your effort and then you ada a good trainer untuk coach you, untuk jadi a confident speaker. Daripada takut and malu-malu to someone yang macam, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Ha, so you akan jadi berani. But first, memang you akan rasa takut. You will feel scared at first and it's okay. And that is why you need to have a trainer to pimpin you. Pegang tangan you. So the trainer will guide you. That's why it's really important to have a teacher. That's why it's important to have teachers like uh, Pavin and also the rest of, you know, our our teachers, our lecturers. It's really important for us to, you know, give uh, credit and thank you to our teachers and our lecturers. They are the one guiding, you know, our students. So kalau kita buat salah, kita takut, uh, kita scared to start the first mood, move, Tak apa. It's okay. That's why we need to have trainers and cikgu to hold our hand. Yeah? Okay. And it's okay. Yeah. Betul tak, Parvin? And it's, yeah. it's, it's okay to feel it's okay to feel scared at the beginning. But if you have a trainer, if you have a teacher to guide you, you can either mentor. Very important. You can either mentor. Like me, I have a mentor. I have a teacher. Uh, I have a teacher. I have a mentor. So it's really important to have a teacher and mentor to guide us because we need to seek advice from people who are, you know, older than a senior, our seniors, can. Yeah, so it's really important, even for me, myself, if I'm not sure, I will ask the guidance from my seniors. I couldn't agree more with that, Farisha. That's why even in college level and university level, we do have presentations. For their assignments this is actually for us a step for us to teach the students how to build up their soft skills soft skills we guide them if they're not doing really well and usually it starts from sem one up to sem six so for as long as they are with us we usually will guide the students to do well but it's true what you say that social skills and also soft skills sorry it's a very important skill that we have to build up it does not really come naturally to us for most of us so building it up is very very important Yes, it's really important to build yourself out. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to share with you uh, this slide. Okay. Can you guys see it? Okay. What can you see from this slide? A cat looking at itself as a tiger. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what we have here is a picture of a small little kitten. Okay. The small little kitten is looking at the reflection. Yeah. And the reflection is a... It's a big tiger, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what it is trying to say is the message, the hidden message behind it is, you know, even though that you are young, yeah, Masa College students, so all the students at Masa College, you guys are 20, 21, 22, you guys are young, you guys are in all your youth, and you are the small little cute kitten. Like in the photo. And sometimes you doubt yourself. You feel that, oh, I'm I'm too young to apply for this job. Oh, I'm too young. I don't have the experience. I'm too young. People doubt me. I'm too young. I need to learn more. So sometimes you doubt yourself and you think that, oh, I'm 22 years old. I don't think that I'm capable of uh, delivering this presentation because I'm young. So what I want to encourage to all of you here today even though that you are 19, 20, 21, you guys are still young. It's okay. It's okay to dream big. It's okay to have ambition. It's okay to have a big dream and big goal. Sky's the limit, okay? And it's okay to dream big and believe in yourself. Because when people say, oh, you're too young, you're not capable of doing this job, or you're too young, you know, you can't do this because you're 21, 22. I want you to prove them that they are wrong. I'm young, but I'm going to prove to you that even though that I'm young, but if I have the initiative, if I have the initiative and passion to do something, I will get it done. Yeah, I will get it done. So I give you an example. You are 21 years old and you are a second year student of Masa College. And Miss Parvin asks you to organize an event and you are the chairperson of the event. Eh? So you have to coordinate the event from A to Z. So as a student leader, even though that you are 22 years old, you are leading the, the university. Oh, sorry, that's my cat. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you are leading your university in organizing that event. And you are 22 years old. 
Yeah, so so you can see that, you know, even though that you're 22 years old, but the university, Masa College, has already given you a big responsibility and task to coordinate that event. Betul tak, Parvin? Yeah, it's a big task. Yeah, yeah. We definitely do ask our students to organize events so that we could teach them. This is how they are building up their soft skills so that they can believe in themselves that they are able to carry it out. Instead of always letting the lecturers and all everybody else doing it, you do it, you gain the experience. It's valuable. So when you go into the industry, you're not going as a blank sheet. You go in with experiences as small as it is, it matters at the end of the day. Okay? Exactly. And I totally agree with you, Parvin, because melentur bulu biarlah dari rebungnya. So it means that melentur bulu, we have to start from young. Because when you have that experience, when you're in university and college, uh, let's say when you start your first job, yeah, you start your first job working in a company, you dah tahu dah macam mana nak buat event. You already know how to do it because you have experienced it when you were in college and university. Yeah, so I guess that it's good, you know, it's really good training ground, Pabin, uh, for Masa College and Masa University to train their students to develop leadership skills, you know, in college and in university. You know how to coordinate events. Uh, you know, like, macam, for example, the student yang jadi MC, you become the MC, and then the one yang uh, doing the coordinating, doing the guest invitation, who's going to do the montage, the backdrop, video from A to Z, yeah? The production crew, everything, all the teamwork. And this all built leadership skills because everyone have taken ownership and responsibility. Yeah? They have a different task and responsibility that they need to do in order to make the uh, Masa College event a success. And that builds their leadership and character. Yes, this is why we usually hold um, events and we ask students to organize it. So students who are watching now, do engage yourself with all the activities that we have here. There's always a meaning to why we are doing it. It's not because we want you to fill up your free times or whatnot. We are trying to create skills for you. You are finding yourself in college and universities. Right, Farisha? Okay, thank you, Parvin. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, the slide is off. Okay, so now we are at Q&A, Q&A session. So anyone have any questions that you want to ask me? Um, I do have a question to ask you, actually. How do we engage ourselves to be in the fintech industry? Since this is new and upcoming, this is a, and I believe that it's going to grow further in the future, just for the students, right? How can they get into the industry, basically? What, what is the first step they need to do? Good question. That is a very good question, Parvin. Okay, so the first question that a student need to do is by building their brand on LinkedIn. And as you know, on LinkedIn, there's also LinkedIn jobs. Yeah? You can apply for jobs on LinkedIn. And there's also platforms like JobStreet, jobstreet.com.my, where you can apply for jobs there. And there's also other platforms such as Maukerja and uh, the Star, the Star Jobs as well. So you can see like there are fintech, there are startup, there are tech companies looking to hire fresh graduates. Yeah. So this is the opportunity for you to start branding yourself. So uh, like what I mentioned just now, start building your brand through LinkedIn, get yourself exposed, get yourself professionally exposed out there so that the recruiter and also hiring managers, the human resource uh, managers will see your profile and immediately they will like send you a message and ask you to attend an interview session. Yeah. So uh, my advice to Masa College student is start building your brand. Register for a LinkedIn account. Open an account with LinkedIn. Start, start building your profile. Put your professional photo out there. And then if you have CV, yeah, your CV, your resume, put it in. And let's see if you have any certificates. You either dapat uh, anugrah dekan or you dapat uh, any certificate, e-certificate from college or university. Any certificates that you have achieved, yeah, your achievement, put it out there, put it on LinkedIn, uh, mm -hmm. the soft copy, uh, the JPEG, yeah, the JPEG soft copy. Why? So the reason why you have to put it out there because so that HR and recruiters can see, they will see mm -hmm. that, ah, okay, this boy, he is very active in um, debate, debate, mm -hmm. debate team. Yeah, yeah. So he is also active in sports. 
Yeah, so they want to see your academics and they also want to see your co-curriculum activity. Yes, and apart from that, they also want to see your social side as well. Let's say, like, for example, you are the, uh, terlibat dalam CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. You berkunjung ke rumah anak-anak yatim uh, untuk bagi makanan pada bulan puasa. They want to see that side as well. They want to see your engagement in volunteer work. Uh, apa benda yang you dah buat dekat universiti. So it's not just academic results that yeah. HR wants to see. They also want to see your character, your personality, uh, your voluntary work, uh, your co-curriculum, sports and all that. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. also leadership skills. So that is very important. So my advice would be start getting active on LinkedIn. Expose yourself out there. And you never know, you might get a phone call from HR and then Hishar will invite you for a job interview. That could happen, definitely could happen, right? I'm sorry, Shah, sorry to cut the session short because we are already above uh, one hour we have the next session. Whatever yeah. session that we will receive on our Facebook and also our social medias, I will post it to you. I will get your email address and so that, you know, we could at least answer the students for, um, for whatever that they are asking you. Okay. Right? And, yeah. and it was a great session. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. I mean, it was wonderful things. I hope that the students are able to pick a lot of stuff out of what you've said on your, on building your social skills, your networks, LinkedIn, you know, like all of that. It's really important. And we really appreciate you spending your time and commitment, especially on a Sunday morning to be giving a webinar session. It's really amazing, yeah? And also, Farisha, maybe one day I think that we could collaborate to actually engage the students and you know like some of the students is not like linked yes ask if there's any internship opportunity in um Zoom settle you know maybe we could engage to yes know so what i'm going to do yeah i'm going to share my email address so this is my email address okay so this is my email address can you see yeah uh, i can see it i will share it with the students Okay, so you're going to share yeah. my email address with the students. So if they are interested to apply for internship opportunity, you can send me an email address, okay? And then we'll take it from there. Yeah, sure then, Parisha. And um, so to all the viewers, students, academicians, public, and also all of MAIC staff, thank you very much for hearing and listening to our interesting discussion today. And to the students out there and also parents, if you would like to know more about Masa Avenue International College, feel free to drop by to visit our website or even to come just to walk in to find out more about the courses that we are offering, especially that SPM results are coming out on next week, Wednesday, I believe. And so if you're unclear on what you want to do with your future, just walk in and our business development team, they will help you out and they will guide you on what you could do next. Yeah? And also for School of Accountancy and Business, we do offer uh, diploma in human resource, diploma in business, accounting, as well as certificate in business. Um, until we meet again, Farisha, thank you so much once again. And to all of the viewers, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and Marvin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, bye.